What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Justin Falls. We back at it again with another video, and today we are looking at a brand new game with an old vibe to it. So this one is called um, Echo. Wait, I don't. How did I forget the? How did I forget the name? Well, we do it live here, so whatever. Echoes of the Living. So there's this channel called Residents of Evil. They cover everything Resident Evil. They're working on a first-person, old-school retro uh, survival horror game, and this is the developer. That they're working with, and they're they and that developers also making another game called Echoes of the Living. I first saw it here. I didn't I didn't finish watching through it because it was about it was over an hour long. But here we get 14 minutes of gameplay from IGN. So we're gonna check out their gameplay, see how it differs. Uh, well, I'm gonna see how it differs. If you want, you can go to Residents Residents of Evil's channel and check out that hours worth of gameplay. So, without further ado, let's get to the video perspective tank controls and every 90s survival with a fixed camera perspective tank controls and every 90s survival horror cliche in the book echoes of the living is recreating that traditional resi feel for all the purest fans of the genre we gave the recently released demo a whirl and were pleasantly surprised with how faithful it is to the classic resident e you can download this demo on steam right now i forgot to mention that evil 90s experience have a look for yourself You would think you would think Capcom would like come after these people, but I mean, when you make an original game, even though it's heavily based on an already already established IP, I guess it doesn't matter as long as everything in it, as far as like you know what's shown on screen, as far as like assets and stuff like that, and the names of things are completely different, then I guess it's okay. Because I know when they were trying to make the RE4 remake, the community tried to make it and they were almost done. And then they shut and then Capcom shut it down. And then now years later we see that they are making the art the official RE4 remake. You could probably still download it though. Somewhere. If you want that version. But I would just wait for the official Capcom one. Because they have obviously they have more assets, more more uh, money to put towards it and they're the ones that created it so why would you not want it straight from the horse's mouth yeah you can still tell us in demo form because the audio is kind of choppy like i heard a zombie it's like, ah! like it just cut off instead of kind of fading out so they're still working on this game obviously but it looks like a carbon copy of the old Resident Evil games, like the some more, the more survival horror based ones with the tank controls and the fixed camera angles. Like that's the the top defining features. And then and then I was watching when I was watching the video on the Residents of Evil channel, it was um the zombies took like eight shots. Seven or eight shots to put down. And that's how it is for those older RE games, like, you know, RE one, RE original RE two. Uh, RE Zero, you know. Me personally, I'm gonna be real with y'all. I'm more of a fan of the more action-oriented ones, like where you can move and shoot at the same time, or at least you can move around and then when you stand still, you can aim down sights where you're shooting, and the camera's behind the, the character, like third person, third person kind of vibe. Uh oh, cutscene. Uh oh. Back in the kitchen, they, they got in. Uh-oh. You're about to bust through the door. Uh-oh, Billy Bob woke up. Here we go. Here comes the horror. Now, will he survive? We don't know. I like how fluid the movement looks though. The movement, even though it's tank controls, it looks very smooth. And the, and the transitions to the camera, the transitions of the camera, of the fixed camera angle, looks very smooth to me. Looks very smooth to me. I'm liking what I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing thus, thus far. 
from this from this uh from this game. Yeah, like some some of them take five, some of them take seven, some of them take eight shots. Like, like it's not this is not this these type of games are not like run and gun type shooters. It's like you gotta or manage your resources. Like this is a resource management game. Kind of like how in real life, if there was a zombie apocalypse going on, you're not gonna just have infinite bullets everywhere. You gotta time your shots and a lot of times you gotta run away. These games you can't take a lot of hits. A, a, a couple a couple scuffles and you're you know you're dead. You know, they bite they, they eat you alive. Oh See, jump scares don't work on me. Like, first of all, I'm a fan of horror movies. You know what I'm saying? And I've been through so much in my life. Growing up how I grew up, I, like, it just, like, it, just, just, it doesn't scare me. I might, you know, like, you'll never catch me like that. Like, I'll, like, oh, like, it'll, the jump scare, the jump will be more internal because that's just, like, my, that's just, like, my reactions, my reflexes. But I will never ha ah, like like I'll yell like when I be yelling and stuff that's that's me being dramatic like if you go watch my stream highlights I was playing um I was playing Choo Choo Charles and um I was reacting I was like, ah like I was like yo because it was this one part where if I don't know if you ever played Choo Choo Charles but it's this one it's it's a train that's like a spider. It looks like it's look like Thomas the train. Thomas the talking train or whatever you call it. And but it's like a spider. So your train and you have a train with weapons on it. So you can only fight him while you're on the train with weapons on it. And it's on a fixed track that goes throughout the uh that goes throughout the uh um the world. So some, sometimes you gotta get off track to get resources. So I went off track to get resources and weapons. He comes running behind me. Big old train, choo choo train. And I'm like, ah, I started bugging out. Like, so that, you know, stuff like that. I'll do it on purpose just for entertainment purposes, but I really don't get scared. It don't really scare me. I don't know why I just went on that rant, but I mean, th there's no dialogue. So y'all can watch this and listen to me talk at the same time. If you're here watching, it's because you want to hear my reaction or you want to hear a person's reaction. So, so far, I think this game is dope. Like I said, the camera angles are smooth. The audio is dope. The colors are dope. Like the sense of the sense that the world, this world has been through something is very imminent. Like I can feel it. Like this world is going going to shit, you know, right now. And I think they, they did a good job of capturing the vibe of a Resident Evil style survival horror game. While at the same time doing their own thing. With their vision and what they what they think would be a good survival horror game. Look like a big old spider just webbing people up. Like you have man bat and you have Batman. I think this is gonna be a. Uh, Man Spider. I one I wonder what they call what they call their infected. Like uh because you know you got in Resident Evil is bio weapons and you have the letter the letter viruses. So I wonder what they what what the lore is here. You don't shoot that lot. And just pop shoot that lock or pop it open with the with the crowbar you just had that's what I don't that's what I don't like sometimes about Resident Evil games they send you on a lot of busy work like where you could do things logically like like right there he had a, it was a chain lock with a regular a chain and a padlock you could pop that with a crowbar you could pop the chain or lock with the crowbar or you could just shoot it why give me busy work why do I have to go around 
and look for an item in another room when I could just shoot it. Like, cause there's instances where they let you shoot locks open or crowbar a door open. So I don't know. It's just the continuity for stuff like that is just doesn't. No, not the continuity. Like the logic for things like that doesn't really um, make sense to me. Shoot the barrel. Shoot the barrel. They take too many shots. Come on, IGN. You should have not got hit there. You should have just aimed straight for the barrel. You don't see that big, shiny red barrel? I know he saw it just now. He tight. <laughs> I know he saw it right after you finished. My for you. I'm texting, but I'm looking. I got one eye on the screen. I can see it in my peripheral vision. My fault. Uh -huh. I want to see the spider. Do we get to run into the spider? Let's see. It doesn't look like it. Because it looks like there's a big spider enemy that you're going to have to fight. I'll, that's another thing about the Resident Evil style survival horror games. Like, you get the big encounters with the big monsters, the big bio weapons. I love those fights. Those, I live for those. Like, for real. Like, some of them are super easy, but it's just like the over the topness, like, the action and the over the topness of it and the suspense. Is, is just it's just something that you live for as a as a gamer as a gamer you want those over the top out of this world experiences that's you know that's the reason why we game you know to take us to give us a escape from reality let let us do things that we wouldn't normally do in real life that gives you a proper balance like if you have a social life, if you have some type of social life. Now, I'm not saying sit home and play video games all time at all times and suspend yourself in this other world. Like that's not healthy. Too much. I always went up the mindset. Too much of anything is a good is a bad thing. Too much of anything is a bad thing. You know, even money. You know, because it could turn you into a wicked person. It could get you into a lot of trouble. But you know, as far as video games, it's a good balance to to your social life. And to your your personal time and how you spend your personal time. <laughs> 
If you like that video, why not check out a concept that was made by a fan for how Resident Evil 7 could look with a fixed camera perspective. Yeah, I saw that video before. Go check that out if y'all haven't. But yeah, this game, like I said, um, I wanted to see the big monster. I wanted to see the big. I wanted to see a big encounter. We didn't get that. We got a lot of zombie combat. This is like this is more in the vein of the earlier Resident Evil games, where you um have to shoot the enemy eight million times to defeat them. But it's not about shooting. It's about surviving. So you got to pick and choose and and, re and managing your resources. So you got to pick and choose when and where what you're going to use your resources on and solving puzzles. We didn't really get to see any puzzles, but he did face a few locked doors and you had to go through a couple of other rooms to grab an item to get through, which is uh, which is prevalent throughout all the Resident Evil games, even the more action oriented ones like five and six, like four, five and six, you know, so. Yeah, that was dope. I, I, I'm, I think I might play the demo and see if I can get farther than this person got, and see if I can get a big encounter with the with the bigger enemy, if that if that exists. Um, but either way, it should be fun. So, uh, y'all, let me know what y'all think of this game. Y'all, y'all excited for? It? Are you gonna try out the demo? Does it look corny? Are you even into these kind of games? Let me know. So, uh, y'all already know the vibes. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's your boy Justice Falls will be out. One. Thank you.